All right, so today I want to do a quick demo uh, for people who are not uh, used to this. This is your first time uh, joining uh, this type of uh, get together. Uh, the reason we're, we're doing this is that this is going to be very helpful both for the blue team students for the Cyberforce competition and also our red teaming um, volunteers to get them into the right mindset of the process that they will need to use to uh, effectively perform during game day doing uh, cybersecurity type of activities. So uh, today I will be showing uh, this CV. It is a path traversal vulnerability within Apache. And so with that, let's sort of jump right in, right? So according to this website right here, this is the uh, payload of the URL to trigger this vulnerability. So let's sort of, uh, give it a shot, right? So here I have a virtual machine. Uh, one second, what is, okay, cool. Let's kind of mute that. Okay, cool, that's muted. All right, so let's go here to our POC and I have it running locally on the system, right? So, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, so let's do 12700.1, right? We run it, oops, we you have to use curl here. We run it and then we get a forbidden message, right? And so, um, you know, according to what I'm showing here, uh, are we sort of confident that, hey, this uh, machine is not vulnerable? Uh, I, without knowing too much, I guess so. Uh, Essentially, yeah. yeah. So, so th this, yeah, I really, really good answer. And this is the extent that most people uh, tests the, these kind of uh, proof of concepts, right? Where there's an article, there's a blog post that says, hey, this is how you test it, right? And you test it. And based on that test, you're like, hey, it didn't work. So perhaps I'm not vulnerable, right? And, but the, the thing here with this particular setup that I have for my machine is that according to the default here, which most pen testers and right teamers, they would do, they were like, hey, let me test this, right? And then they'll cut and paste it. But for this environment, it just, just so happens that the directory in this case is named something that's not default. So if I run this command right here, right, I get back Etsy password, right? But the reason I, 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 I think this is very important to share is that for these kind of competitions, the cyber defensive competitions, unless this is sort of kind of kept into uh, kept in mind, the effectiveness of the pen testing team, the red team, can be very limited with the small window they have of one day, right, against active adversaries, and the chances of them, if there was some different configurations that the defenders have, even though the vulnerability is there. The, the red team might not find it at all because of the time limitations and you know this type of approach, right? And that's why I'm a sort of a huge advocate of doing sort of more of an assumed breach model for these kind of exercises, right? So now let's, and then the other thing I sort of, the other big point I wanna share about this is that I'm sort of trying to share how uh, a lot of us uh, cybersecurity professional go about vetting uh, these kind of vulnerabilities. And this is very typical. And I just wanna show you the different ways we go about, about doing it and, and what it means for uh, the actual results, right? There's, there, it's not necessarily bad or wrong or one is better than the other. It's just the reality of how we do our work, right? So in this case, it was just a different directory because this target environment was different from the default. So that's why you can get false positives. You know, that, that's a really big, big important part is that you can get false positives. So later on, right? So it gives you these different payloads. And then one, one of the, the final payload is that, oh yeah, uh, one of the other things I guess I should sort of really quickly touch upon before we get to the other payload is that, right? So, so people who know, this is a um, sort of a path traversal vulnerability. And so the question that we sort of have to think about is what is the impact and what can an adversary really do with this, right? So I feel like for uh, very experienced pen testers, they're like, hey, uh, you know, Etsy password, that's something. But for people who know cybersecurity, it's not the end of the world. Right, an attacker can use this potentially to move further along, right? But what's a file that's really juicy that we got our hands on? It means like, hey, that's kind of that's a little more risky than Etsy password. What, what's what's a, what's another file that we, uh, we Etsy shadow? Yes, right. Etsy shadow. So, but then, yeah. 
Etsy shadow is, is, is the next file I'm going to touch. And then, so let, let's just, just do that real quick, right? So let's see if we have access to Etsy shadow. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, forbidden. So this, this is why, uh, you know, I, I, I want to do this is like, now we're digging deeper in terms of how the techno technology actually works and what's the real uh, risk here for this particular target system. So, uh, you know, Jesse or others, why do you think we got this forbidden message for Etsy Shadow here? Maybe it's somewhere else. Uh, no, no, no. It's 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 it's, it's, it's there, but uh, potentially sometimes you get an error message. It, it might be somewhere else. It's permissions then. Yes, yeah. it is <laughs> permissions, right? So that's another really important concept that us red teamers and also the blue teaming students need to be very aware of is how permissions in this case of the target system for this process affects the level of risk for this vulnerability. So if we were to jump to, so I have a console here on this machine right here. And if let's like sort of clear this, but if we were to do a that and the process name for the, the web, the web server's HTTPD. So if I run this, what you'll notice is that there's multiple process for HTTPD. And the first one is ran as root, but all these other ones are ran as, as the daemon processes. So this is where you'll need to do a little more research about how Apache works. And so how Apache works is that the first process that Apache spawns is this uh, root process. Then what it ends up spawning is it spawns up these other child processes that will actually uh, take care of processing the web request, right? So if one of these uh, web requests has some kind of vulnerabilities or compromise, the permission level of, of that compromise is only that daemon process. And that daemon process does not have access, does not have the sufficient level of privilege to touch the Etsy shadow password file, which has the hashes of the passwords, right? And that's why this one, depending on what else is there, it's not as bad as if this process was ran as root, because if that was the case, then it's sort of game over in a lot of situations where now they could read some really sensitive files that an attacker can then use to further their, 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 their damage against the system, right? So yeah, re re really, really good answers there. So yeah, so the next, so then we go down to sort of the next comment, right? So according to this payload, this website is claiming, hey, you can get uh, code execution. And in this case, they claim that by using uh, this command right here, they are basically passing this ID command to a uh, bin shell. And then they, they claim that you'll be able to get the results of this ID command, right? Run, running on the system. So let's try it out, right? Let's try it out to see what happens here. So we run it. Uh, let's make sure all of our arguments, we are not 8080, we are just regular 80. And in our, our case, our path is, but for those curious, right? As is, it says, because I'm leaving that CGI bin, you get this kind of results, right? You don't have permissions. And, uh, but then, you know, our path is actually CG, right? So we run this CG command, right? Very interesting output. So if, if you look at the output, it says binary can, can mess up with your terminal. So we don't get results of the command itself. We're getting this kind of this strange error message and I'll leave this as an exercise for the audience in terms of, hey, why is, is this particular error message coming out, right? There, there's a reason there. And if you sort of play around with it, uh, hopefully you'll be able to figure out why we're getting this kind of error message, right? So uh, the point here with, with uh, testing that and showing that is basically, according to what this website says about trying this payload, and if it didn't give more detail, it's, it's because this, uh, this website says, this is a remote commode, uh, code execution, in my target environment, no, it is not code execution. What you have is you can read files, but you can't execute code here, right? According to how, how this one is, is sort of explaining it. But if we go to this other this other website right here, it gives it goes into a little bit more detail. So it, what this article says on this website, it says you need the mod CGI uh, module to be enabled to actually get the code execution. So again, right now we're getting we're digging a little bit more into details, and then for us as a, so we're interested in defending or knowing about oh hey is is this an issue for us right so uh, the way we would do that like so now we get more information we tested it and we found hey we did not get code execution then we read this other article and it says hey to get code execution you actually need this mod underscore CGI but then for us we should verify that right in terms of for us to verify how do we go about verifying it we got it okay so it sounds like this this service called apache 
it has this uh, this this capability of having modules. And then for us to know if uh, our system is affected, we should find a way to enumerate those modules to see, hey, is this CGI module actually there? And if not, we're, we, don't have, we don't have to worry about code execution. But if it is there, maybe there is some issue with code execution, right? So here, uh, back into uh, that VM, uh, the way to get that, I believe, is uh, HTTP-M. And yeah, running that, it lists all the modules. And if you kind of quickly eyeball it, or you know, for more, your more fancy uh, Linux gurus, right? We can get a script for CGI. Uh, the 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 CGI module is not there, right? So for this target, uh, for this target system, it's uh, we don't have to worry about code execution because that CGI module is not there. And then for an exercise for the audience, just because that module is there, there might be some other. Uh, configurations you have to do for your Apache to actually be vulnerable for the remote code execution itself. And I leave that as an exercise for the audience. But for those curious, right, uh, I, I, okay, for me, what I end up doing was I also have another version of Apache running on 777 and with uh, a different path. And I believe I have it vulnerable for the CGI mod with the code execution, right? So if I run this, Okay, close, please contact. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. So I uh, let's see if I can troubleshoot that really fast. Otherwise, I will leave that for maybe a future demo here. Seven seven. External da, 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 da. counter. Oh. Yeah. I, I I will I, I will show this in a, in a future one, but the my, my point here was that to actually get uh, these target systems to a vulnerable state, there are additional things you have to do with your configuration. And for people who run these kind of cyber defense competitions, I think that's a very important point to note is that just because you throw some software and some VMs together doesn't mean you actually have a very target rich environment that is actually exploitable. So in the real world, what makes a real world exploitable is that in the real world environments, uh, people have to get work done. And when people have to start enabling features and getting things to work and adding additional functionalities, that's where potentially security misconfigurations and uh, vulnerabilities might crop up in a working environment in the real world. And in these competition environments, unless you sort of spend the efforts of making sure that's the, that was the case in your environment, you're not gonna get this really target rich environment where there's vo real vulnerabilities there. And um, yeah, the, the, and then the last point I sort of wanted to, to sort of uh, go through with, uh, with this vulnerability is that first off, I showed you um, how most security uh, professionals they verify these vulnerabilities. They will find some uh, POC, POC on, on somewhere on the internet, try it out to see if they're vulnerable or not. And then if it's not, they're like, okay, I guess I'm not vulnerable. But if you go to a system administrator level, right, in terms of really digging into the details, then you're like, hey, wait a minute, I might be vulnerable, but my configuration is a little different from what the POC uses. So I have to change the POC a little bit and it'll actually they verify that vulnerability, right? So that was the system administration level. And also with, I also share that with RCE and how you have to verify uh, other parts of your configurations and additional modules to see, hey, am I vulnerable to RCE? I have to do some system administration type skills to verify that. And then now we're talking about another step even deeper to that, right? And most professionals don't get to this level because we don't have to, and this is another reality. It's like, it's depending on your priority and you know how much time you have. And for some stuff, you might be just at a very superficial, superficial level of verifying vulnerabilities. But for other stuff, if it's very, uh, if your, your environment is sort of dependent on say this browser, then you're gonna spend a lot of time and you're gonna really want to like, dig in as much as possible. And in this case, right, to dig into most, the most furthest level is like, you're actually gonna like look at, uh, you know, details about what, what the code is doing and why is it vulnerable from the code level, right? So what happened? was that for this version of Apache, I think it's 2.4.49, a developer added some additional functionality. And what they added 
was this uh, path normal uh, AP normalization path, right? And so what they're doing here is that they're looking for this dot notation. And so people who are familiar with directory traversal, you use dots and dot dots to try to uh, change your directory to some other path that the original developers didn't have in mind for you to have permissions to, right? That that's sort of the basic uh, concept behind it. So an attacker will try to use dot dot and dot dots to sort of go somewhere else in in the your file system to access like Etsy password and Etsy shadow. So in this case, what they did was they looked for that and they removed it. And what they didn't take into account is that in the web world for URLs, you can encode characters in different notations. And in this case, if we go back to the POC, what they encode, what they encoded the dot notation is if you can use a URL encoding of uh, percent, uh, yeah, percent two e, that is equivalent to a dot, right? But according to the code, the code does not take that into account. So later on in the processing of, of uh, that URL getting decoded, it will be decoded into a dot that percent two e. And that's why you got the directory traverse, right? And so once you get to this level, then you'll be able to analyze patches and then try to figure out, hey, this patch will actually uh, remove the vulnerability, or maybe there's some deficiency in the patch that did not completely remove the vulnerability. And interestingly enough, in this case, uh, the, the first patch that they did, they didn't cover all of the bases, I believe. I'm gonna have to do more details, but it didn't completely patch the vulnerability and they had to create another patch. And sometimes this happens, you know, fixing vulnerability is some, in a lot of cases, very, very difficult and challenging. And so, you know, you gotta be aware of that, you know, in terms of if sometimes a vendor just says, hey, this is a patch, you know, you're good to go. Uh, hopefully you will have someone on your team that can vet it to, you know, verify whether or not that it does really patch your system. And, you know, with that, that ends my demo. And unless there's sort of any questions, you know, I'm going to uh, stop this presentation.